So remember, shear is that puncturing force that's causing this beam to potentially fail. And so this beam is feeling shear all throughout. It's gonna feel positive shear in some places and negative shear in other places. And so to set up a shear diagram or a V diagram, I create a line that just represents the length of this beam from left to right side. And I just look at my up and down forces as I go through and I just add them to this diagram. So let's start with the very left side. I see this upward force of 1142.86. And so we go up on our shear diagram and I'm gonna label that as 1142.86. And so that shear is gonna be constant in this beam until we reach another force. And so that 1500 pound force is gonna push down and that's gonna cause the shear to drop and so this number, 1142.86, will actually go down by 1500. And so now the shear has dropped to negative 357.14. And so remember that shear is gonna be constant all the way until another force is encountered. So this upward 800 pound force is gonna cause the shear to jump up by 800. And now it's jumped to positive 442.86. So we've gone back to positive shear again and it's gonna stay at this amount of shear inside of the beam until another force is encountered, which is the downward 1,200 pound force. So that means this shear is gonna drop by 1,200, and that gives us a negative 757.14, and that will stay constant again until the end. So what happens at the end of this beam? Well, there's suddenly an upward force of 757.14 right at this reaction, and that means this is gonna jump by exactly 757.14, and that takes us back to zero again.